Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Enid Matters Drive-In Church this morning. Uh, we're so glad you could make it this morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with some worship today.
reason that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, this 
sweat through my shirt. I don't believe that's going to happen this morning, and um, but it's just good to be here, good to see everyone here, and um, if you uh, uh, can, uh, want to uh, reiterate and stuff, our, our broadcast is on 107.1, and um, so if you uh, get chilled and you want to roll up your vehicles and windows and crank it and, and listen by radio, you can do so, and, and uh, but again, it's just good to see everyone uh, here uh, this morning, and I, I thought that we were going to be in Hosea uh, this uh, this week and stuff, and and I read and studied and, and I looked at some things there in Hosea and man, it was a wonderful text and, and uh, God uh, spoke to me about a few things and stuff and I woke up uh, this week and had another passage on my heart, on my mind and the more I got to read it, the more I got to looking at it, man, the more that God began to speak 
Uh, I, I'll be honest about it. As uh, as I read uh, here in Daniel, we're going to be this morning, and uh, and you'll have to bear with me. This wind messes with my Bible while I'm trying to read. And uh, but I want to say this: as I read in, jo- in Daniel chapter five, and that's where we're going to be at this morning. And um, and there was one verse. There was one verse that God uh, drove straight through my heart. And um, and I pray uh, that I realize that my words uh, have not the ability to penetrate. Uh, only his words do. And so I pray this morning that God's spirit uh, drives this this chapter, this story, this verse uh, home in your heart. And I pray to God that um, it forevermore changes you. And uh, I'll say this, that every morning this week I woke up with this verse on my mind, on my heart. And, um, and nearly every morning uh, that I've wept over this verse and, uh, and asked God to forgive me and Forgive my family, forgive my father and my father's father. And uh, for we have sinned against the trust, holy God. And so I want us to read here, and you and I both know uh, that I'm not a great reader, and I never claim to be and stuff. And so we got a lot of scripture to read this morning. And so I'm going to try to take my time. And so you be patient with me, and then we'll get into God's word. In Daniel chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Belsadra the king made a great feast of a thousand of his lords. And drank wine before the thousands. And Belshazzar, it says, oh, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels, which was his father's Nebuchadnezzar, and had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem. And the king and his prince and his wives and the concubines might drink therein. And then they brought the gold vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and the princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the little G gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. In that same hour came four fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of that hand and wrote. And the king's countenance was changed. And his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosened. And his knees spoke, or they knocked, one against another. And the king cried out against the the astrologers and the Chaldeans and and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said unto the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing. And show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be third rule in all the king. And then came in all the king's wise men and they could not read the writing nor nor know the king the interpretation thereof. Then the king Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished. Now the king by reason of the words of the king and, and his lords came unto the banquet house and the queen spake and said O God O king live forever let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed there is a man in the kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods and the days of thy father lied in understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of gods and was found in him and now the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians and and astrologers, and Chaldeans, and soothsayers, and for so much as excellent spirit, and knowledge, and understanding, and interpreting the dreams, and showing them hard sentences of the dissolving of doubts, and were, and were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. And now let Daniel, he called, and he, and he now showed the interpretation. And Daniel brought into the, before the king, and the king spake unto, unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel? which are of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry. And have I even heard of thee, and that the spirit of the gods in thee, and that the light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee? And now the wise men, the astrologers, and them brought in before me, that thou should read the, the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the things, and I heard of thee. That thou maketh it in, in, in interpretations and dissolve doubts, and if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have chains of gold about thy neck, and 
shall be third ruler in the kingdom. And Daniel answered and said before the king, Let the gifts be to thyself, and give thy reward to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. Listen to me here. Know thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for thy majesty that he gave him all people and nations and languages and trembling and fearing before him, whom he would be slew and, 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 and whom he uh, would be given alive and whom he would be uh, whom he would set up and whom he would pull down. And when the heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride. He was disposed from the kindly throne, and kingly throne, and, and that took his glory from him. And he was driven from the signs of men, and, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was the wild donkeys, and they fed him with grass and oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of, of men. And he appointed over whosoever he willeth. Thou his son, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled thy heart. Thou knowest all this. He tells Belshazzar, he said, you knew all these things. This happened right before your very face. You knew what happened to your father in his pride and in his arrogance? He says, you knew it. You knew what would happen. You knew it. Verse 23 says, But was lifted up himself against the Lord of heaven, and they brought the vessels of the house before thee. Thy and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drank wine in them. Thou praise the gods, little g of silver and gold and of brass and iron and wood and stone which see not and hear not know not and the God of whom all the breath is and those are all thy ways that thou not glorify and then thy part of the hand sent forth him and, and his writing was writing and his writing the, the writing Mia, Mia Tekka, Lusarphus and, and this is interpretation of the thing Mia, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tico, thou hath weighed in the balance and thou hast found wanting. Person, thy kingdom is divided and given to Medites and the Persians. And then commanded Belshazzar and thy clothed Daniel and scarlet and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation according to him that he should be third ruler in the, in the, in the kingdom. And that night Belsider, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius immediately took the kingdom, being about three score and twenty and two, sorry, years old. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. God, I pray, uh, Lord, as I thought and as I pray, and God, I want to be the first to say, Lord, I'm nothing. God, you're everything. God, I, I always stand here, Lord, upon your strength. Lord, I have no strength. God, I confess that to you, Lord, without your help. Lord, without your might. Lord, without your power. Lord, nothing will be accomplished here. No words worth speaking will be spoken. God, I do pray, Lord, Lord, as it says there in 2 Peter, God, Lord, about those men of old. Lord, those holy men. Lord, and how they spoke, Lord, as the Holy Spirit moved them. God, I desire that today. God, I desire, Lord, your spirit, your unction, Lord, be upon me, Lord. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you help me, Lord, this very moment. Father, forgive me, Lord, of my sins. And in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. I want you to turn your Bibles over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I want to show you a few things here before we actually get into the, uh, the meat of the message. And I want us to look here in 1 Corinthians in chapter 10 and verse 1, uh, verse 1 through 11. And I want to read this to you and uh, this morning real quickly, if I may. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not have that may be ignorant now that all our fathers are under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. 
and did not and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual spiritual uh, drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ but uh, but when many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness and now these things uh, are our examples to intend that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted, neither be ye idolaters, and, and, and were some of them, as it written, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play, as it neither let us commit fornication, as some have committed, and fell, and fell in the day of three and twenty thousand, neither let us tempt Christ, as some did also tempt, and, and were destroyed of serpents, neither murmur as some them that murmured, and were destroyed of the story. All these things happened unto them for examples, unto whom the ends of the world has come. May I say this to you as we read out of the Old Testament, I want to clarify something to you uh, this morning, that the things that we read, these stories, these things, uh, my dear friend, they are 100% true. They are very much true. They are the word of the living God. Not only are they the word of the living God, but the Old Testament, my dear friend, is given to you and I as an example. It is an example to you and I that we might read these things, that we might learn from these things, that we might understand the ways uh, of a holy God, my dear friend. I want to say this to you as we look even in Mal at Malachi 3, 6, it says, For I am the Lord, uh, and I have changed not. Therefore, uh, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Can I say this to you this morning? That you need to read the Bible. We need to understand uh, what took place in the Old Testament. We need to read these stories for our Lord, our Savior. I'll tell you, my dear friend, the Yahweh, He has not changed. Uh, these things that we read about then are very much applicable today. The same way way that he handled men and that day is the same way he will handle men today. You say, well, when you read this story, but like, what have you out of this story that, ap that applies to us? Well, I can, first of all, I can start off by saying this. Man, they were having a great feast. They were, if we want to talk about uh, here in uh, a wingo terms, if you will, they were having a party. That's what they were doing. They're having a gathering. And yet, though, as I think about the American people today, I can say this, my dear friend, my whole life, and I believe the generation before me and maybe even the generation before that, can I say this, that we live our lives as we're having one big party. May I say that we sin and don't even think anything twice about it. We go on about our way, never even thinking about God until Sunday morning. And then we might have a few thoughts uh, while the preacher preaches. And the minute that the church is let out, we go out the door and we go on about our way. That is the American people today. That is the community of Wingo today. That is the church uh, of today. And as we think about the church today, I want you to notice here what was going on for they. Not only were they men uh, uh, here during this time here that defiled themselves, but may I say this, that they took the things uh, that were consecrated, those things which were set apart, those things which had deemed uh, holy to a holy God, and they used them as common things, uh, and they did not care about any of those things, and they took those vessels, those instruments, those things that had been consecrated, those things that had been covered in blood, those things that had been set apart for God's use only, and they had counted them as common. I tell you today, that's the way church is today. You say, what do you mean, boy? Right? When I read when I read stories about pastors zip lining to their pulpit, it makes me gag. May I also say this, not only does it make me gag more than that, my dear friend, it offends uh, and afflicts our Lord and Savior. It makes him gag. When we cry out and we work up uh, some kind of whoop and do everything and got the smoke going and we got some kind of concert and call it a worship service, I'll tell you, my dear friend, our Lord and Savior is not uh, happy. We have taken something that is consecrated. We have taken a holy moment. We have taken his temple and defiled it with our own uh, means uh, and our own methods. <laughs> When I think about worship today in a lot of churches, I tell you, my dear friend, it's not about 
not about lifting up God. It's all about being glorified in thyself. I'll say to you, my dear friend, God has not changed. Uh, he'll share everything uh, with his children but one thing, and that is his glory. I'll tell you, my dear friend, you listen to me good. He will not share his glory. He is a jealous God. Uh, he has not changed. Uh, and some things uh, you don't need to mess with. That is his church. They went and they took those gold articles that came from the temple, those holy things, made them of common use. Today our churches are more of a country club than a place of worship. Today our churches are more of a place of gathering just to hang out, my dear friend, than a place where we fall down upon our face and worship a Christ, holy God. My dear friend, no wonder no wonder judgment is coming. No wonder. When we tell you make idols, my dear friend, out of our things. We care more about our trucks and our cars and how our whole books. Rather not God is pleased with our actions. We care more about whether or not, uh, whether or not we made a uh, uh, fifty or hundred thousand dollars last year at our job than whether or not we paid our church side. And square it up with the Holy God. No wonder. No wonder judgment has come. No wonder. As I continue to read here in verse 4, Daniel chapter 5 says, And they drank wine. He said, Brother, like, what's wrong with wine? <laughs> My dear friend, you need to read your Bible. You'll find in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. It says, uh, Proverbs 20, let me just read that. I don't want to misquote that. I want to get it straight out of the Word of God. I don't want it to be Ike's words. Uh, but dear friend, I want you to hear what the Holy Word of God says uh, about you and your drinking. So I'm not hurting anyone. Sure you are. You're creating a stumbling block for your children, your children's children, those in your community. That's what the Word of God says. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, wine is a mocker, strong drink is ragging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Can I sum that up And in Wingo terms? If you like to drink, you're a fool. That's what it says. You're unwise. Not only that, my dear friend, but may I also say this, in Proverbs chapter 23, I realize that they can hear me all wait a minute, Mark. My dear friend, I'm not here to be arrogant. I'm here to tell you what the Word of God says. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 20. Listen to what it says. And be not wine bobbers among religious eaters of, of flesh, and for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowned shall clothe a man with rags. May I say this not only, my, not only, my dear friend, is alcohol wrong, but can I say this, when we belly up to the table, and we consume, uh, and we consume, uh, and we consume, nobody ever preaches on eating. My dear friend, it's in the Word of God. Uh, it would do us some good during this time to push away from the table and begin to fast, uh, and begin to repent, uh, and begin to purge ourselves, my dear friend, because that's what the book tells us to but he goes on and he says this and hearken unto thy father and beg thy despise not thy mother when she is old by the truth and sell it not and also wisdom and instruction and understanding the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and he that the God of the wise child that shall have joy of him and the father and thy mother shall be glad and, and she hath bear thee uh, shall rejoice and my son give my Give thy heart, let thy eye observe my ways. Skip over with me to verse 29. And it says, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentious? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that carry law at the wine, and they go seek and mix drink. Look not, it says, look not. He don't even tell you, even, he ain't talking about taking a drink here. He said, don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. He said, look not thou upon thy, upon thy wine when it is red, when it gives its color, and the cup when it is moved uh, itself away. It to send that glass, it biteth like a serpent, and it stingeth like an adder. I'll tell you, my dear friend, you say, brother, like, what was wrong with their 
partying? What was wrong with their drinking? May I say it one more time and you get me straight on this, my dear friend, that it offends uh, God and it is sin. That's what it says. So I'm just a casual drinker. <laughs> Ain't nothing casual about drinking, my dear friend. Either you drink or you don't. But I'm just a social drinker. My dear friend, I tell you, every alcoholic started with one drink. God, not to even look at it. Don't play with it. We have some people even here today, my dear friend, that have been, been, uh, been, uh, been, been redeemed, if you will, that have recovered, my dear friend, from that thing of alcoholic. Uh, and my dear friend, I tell you, they'll tell you how it is. They'll tell you not to even look at it. They'll tell you what it'll do for you. It'll, it'll bring you to poverty. That's what the Word of God says. It said, no, it said that you're a fool. That's what it says. Not only were they partying up, but also it says, and they praised the gods, little g, of gold and silver and brass and of iron and wood and stone. Thanks. Thanks. A lot of us bow down to our vehicles. A lot of us bow down to our homes, maybe the land that we own. Maybe our 401k or maybe our our bank account, we bow down to that, and that becomes our God, our job. I tell you, my dear friend, we are no different than they were in the day of Daniel. We are no different. This is, this is our nation. This is our nation. And yet, God had enough. And he begins to write upon the wall. May I say this, my dear friend, with this virus and the things that are slowly beginning to fashion. You say, what things are those, my dear friend? I'll tell you what things those are. Some of you are going to struggle with jobs. Some of you are going to struggle with food. Some of you are going to struggle making payments on those things that you created, that, that you bow down to, those gods of houses and gods of vehicles. My dear friend, I'll tell you, the word of God is true. There comes a point when God has had enough. May we heed to the writing upon the wall. May we read the writing upon the wall. As Daniel goes on and as, as he speaks and as he interprets here, as he speaks and as he interprets here, I want us to notice a few things here real quickly. Let me get my notes turned over if I could. Not only is the hand of God here present, my dear friend, I want to say this, that's a great mighty thing, that hand of God. But when we read there, how many times did we read about the hand of God? Well, only in the creation of the Ten Commandments did we see God's hand write something. And then once again, my dear friend, upon that adulterous woman when she was found as our Savior kneels and as he writes in the sand. I don't know what he wrote that day in the sand. I can only speculate, but I can tell you this. My dear friend, it was truth. And I don't know it wasn't truth, my dear friend. I believe with all my heart that it was the Word of God and that it was, uh, my dear friend, judgment upon them. So it's no, it's no, uh, it, 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 it's nothing new, my dear friend, to read what he wrote there. But I want you to notice in verse 6 the countenance of the king. I pray that because of all these things that's going on, I pray that our countenance changes. I pray that our arrogance believe us I pray that our self-sufficientness dissipates. I pray that our knees knock. I pray that we once again begin to fear the Lord. You say, why well, should I fear the Lord? Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Listen to what Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 says. It says, fear not him that kill the body, 
but all, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fill him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. May I say this as we think about, but like I'm not fearful of anything. That's your problem. That's my problem is that we are arrogant and we're not fearful of anything. We have vehicles that we get in and we drive and we have jobs that we go to. We have paychecks where money is in our account and yet we go about our ways and we fear not the things. May I say this? God will and he can and I believe with all my heart that he's doing so will get you and get me in a predicament, my dear friend, and break our back if that's what it takes in order that we might be humbled and that we might once again I fear an almighty God. So they go get Daniel, find out what this interpretation was. I like what Daniel says. Daniel first, he says, first of all, he said, I don't want you gold chain. I'm not interested. And being third ruler, I'm not interested in that. He said, give that to someone else. And then he begins to speak of the king's father. Listen to what he said about his father. Verse 18. O king, thou most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. For the majesty he gave him all peoples, nations, and languages, and trembling and fear before him, whom he would when slew, and whom he also kept alive, and whom he set up, and whom he would be pulled down. He said, God set up some things for your dad in his kingdom. He said he was the greatest in all the world. Because he could prosper. Other nations, thieves knocked at his sight, at his, at his sound of his voice. I tell you, my dear friend, that's exactly where America has been. Where God has set us up. God has made us great. We didn't make ourselves great upon our own accord. You listen to me, what Psalms 75 says. It says that he, he exalted one and he pulled up down another. My dear friend, it's God who has done this. And yet, though, in our arrogance uh, and, in our, and in our prideful selves, uh, we go around and boast about what we've done and what we have created and, and the wealth in our banks uh, and, and how that we uh, we're doing just fine. And here the king watched his daddy do all these things. The word of God says, verse 19, for the majesty that he gave him all peoples and nations and tongues and languages and trembled and feared before him and whom he would be slew and whom he would be given life and whom he set up and whom he would pull down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, I have that underlined and circled in my Bible. When our heart had become hard and we become full of pride, it says, and he, and he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. May I remind you, these things are for our example. May I remind you that our God has not changed. May I remind you, my dear friend, this is us today. And he says, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was, was with the wild donkey and, and fed him and grass with oxen and his body was wet with dew of the heavens until he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom. He said he, 
put him in this place. And he said he kept him there. And he kept him there. And he kept him there. Not until his lips moved. Uh, my dear friend. But until his heart was changed. May I say this. God is not interested in our lip service. God is not interested. My dear friend. In us continually to say I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. I want to, It's great that you're praying. May I say as I said Wednesday night. What God is waiting on. My dear friend. Is a change of our hearts. That's what he's looking at. He's looking at the heart. And he said, And thou, this son, O Belshazzar, has not known thy heart, though thou knewest all this. If you ain't heard a word I said, I want you to listen to these next few little comments. Some of you have closed my Bible so I don't lose my place. Some of you have been to church your whole life, like I have. Some of you have been raised in church. My parents carried me right up the road here to Wingo Baptist Church when I was just a baby. I've heard the stories about Noah and about God's judgment. I've heard, my dear friend, about Abraham and Isaac. I've grown up hearing about Sodom and Gomorrah. I've grown up hearing all these stories, my dear friend, just like you have. We should have known better. We should have known better. We should have known that God would tolerate it forever. And we've left our kids and our grandkids in an awful mess. It happened right in front of our face. We should know. We knew how God worked. We knew how God moved. We knew that His grace and His mercy, my dear friend, would not always be, but there would be judgment for our sin. And yet we continued on. We continued on with our fornicating and our shacking up and living together and our drunkenness and, and our and our fornication and, and doing whatever we want to and, and having our own little g-gods and worshiping the gold and the silver and the iron and our places of work and going and the lake and, and everything else and the hunting and the fishing and we worship all those gods and we knew better we knew better I think about the mess that I have left my son and my daughter. My heart is broken. The heart of the people ought to be broke. Ordinance or not, we ought to be falling out of our vehicles on our face before a holy God and and begging that he forgive us and repent. Because we knew better. That's what Daniel said to the king. You knew better. It happened. You see the example right there in front of your face. We are in the shape that we are in because of the choices that we have made. He said, Brother Ike, is there any hope for us? There is hope. I'm going to finish with one more verse. 
I'm going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to leave you with all this. And I pray that this word, as boosts your heart as it has mine, and I pray that you not rest. I pray that for you. I pray that in the morning when you wake up, that the, that that verse and you and you say as I have all week long, I should have known better. I pray that for you. I pray that. In Proverbs chapter twenty-eight and verse thirteen. Listen to what the Word of God says. Please listen to what the Word of God says. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsakes, them shall have mercy. That's our only hope. Our only hope is in Jesus. Our only hope is in that God would hear, and not only that, but that we would truly repent and that we would forsake. I pray that we are never the same. I pray that our hearts are melted. We should have known better. We should have known. God would not tolerate our corrupt worship, our corrupt lifestyles. We should have known. May we repent and may we turn from our wickedness. If we'll do that, his word promises us that we will have mercy. That's what he's waiting on. But I, surely things will get better. Things will not get better. Until we get right with the Holy Ghost. I pray that your heart is crushed. I pray that you can't wait to get home, to get on your face and square up with him. I pray that today. May we find mercy. May we find mercy. And dear friend, we'll only find that by repenting and forsaking. He ain't changed. He has left these things for our example. May we heed God's holy word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you show us, Lord, our ways. God, Lord, all I can do is, Lord, just say I'm sorry. God, I ask, Lord, you forgive me. Lord, of my sin, I ask, Lord, you forgive me of the sins of my father and my father's father. God, I pray, Lord. Lord, that we would forsake, Lord, our wickedness. God, Lord, may we draw close to you. Lord, Lord, I pray, Lord, may we draw close. And Lord, I pray, Lord, may you draw close to us. God, I pray, Lord, may we have clean hands and clean hearts. God, I pray, Lord, today be a new day. I pray be a new day. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here I come, crying my soul. Remember, redemption till where your blood.
will be preaching tonight uh, at the church and so of course we'll be just doing live stream video on there so I ask you turn in tune in sorry tune in and, and stuff and, uh, and be praying for him this afternoon God bless y'all hope y'all have a good afternoon and I love you thank you for coming let's pray Father we thank you Lord again Lord for your word God um Lord, I have no words. Lord, other than I'm sorry. God, I pray, uh, Lord, may this word, Lord, that's been spoken, God, it's not my word, it's yours. God, I pray, Lord, that it'd speak to our hearts. God, I pray, Lord, that our, our soul and our knees would knock. God, I pray, Lord, that our countenance would change, Lord, spiritually mostly, physically, Lord, everything. God, have mercy upon us. Lord, watch over us and keep us safe. God, we ask, Lord, for that. We ask, Lord, that you be merciful to us. Forgive us of our sins and our failures, Lord. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.